there's one secret magic trick whatever you want to call it to fish keeping and that is testing your water now don't click out I know you're thinking that doesn't apply to me but this video applies to specifically you the person that says I test my water I don't need to listen to this video no this is exactly for you testing your water is the most important thing we can do in our aquarium it's not fun we get lazy we typically stop doing it myself included employees everyone does it other youtubers and the reason i know this is because i've been in contact with everyone right so when a youtuber comes to me and their favorite fish is dying and it's dying in front of you know the camera essentially and they want to fix it and they've tried all these things and i go well what's this water printer what's this well i haven't tested it what do you mean water tells us everything about our fish pretty much now there's more than just a test kit by the way most people stop at the test kit and it blows my mind one of the most important things you can be testing is temperature get yourself a little temp gun a thermometer i mean i like the temp gun i got a lot of tanks and i really like to see you know how hot is my hand 89 degrees crazy how hot's this tank 73 degrees and so you can get accurate temperature i just learned literally two minutes ago i have a a pond right next to the heater and I go Ooh, I wonder how hot this gets it is colder than the one next to it away from the heater my assumptions were wrong and that's what I want to tell you guys is your assumptions are killing your fish they're making your job harder they're doing all of these things because we assume well this tank you know one of the big assumptions I made we've had these goldfish and they flash and they do stuff and I've put so many meds through them to go what is wrong with these things I changed food. I did all, I did everything. In my opinion, what was wrong now that I found out is the temperature. Even though there's no heaters, we don't heat this room, and it should be very cold in there. The equipment, the canister filter, the return pump, the lights, all that kind of stuff raises the temperature. So now, once I got this, I ordered it up because my other one had broken. Dang it. But we have them at the warehouse. We have them at the store. They're very important. And I tested it, and I go, boom. What are you, goldfish? And it was telling me, wait a second, it's 77 degrees. How can that be? How can this tank be 77 degrees when all of the rest of the tanks in the building run at 74? How can this one be hotter with no heaters, nothing like that? It doesn't matter. That's the thing, is now because I tested, I know the problem. We ended up removing the tops. We put a fan that turns on at night and does evaporative cooling and has really brought it back down. And we're hovering now at 72 degrees, much better for these goldfish. But that's not all. You also, every time you run into a problem, the first thing you want to do, test the water. So yes, temperature, very, very important, and everyone skips it. Everyone. Okay, a simple wrong would have done just fine. So you got to test for uh, ammonia, pH, hardness, nitrites, and nitrates. I get it. You're an old, crusty dude. Too old! You've been in the hobby for a million years, and you never have ammonia. You never have nitrate. That tank's been set up for 22 years. It's never had a problem. Great. But you're having a problem now, and that's the important part. The minute there's a problem, you got to break out the full test kit. Now, I'm the laziest guy around, right? Or maybe I just don't have a lot of time. One of those two things is true. So I use these uh, easy test strips by Tetra. Are they the most accurate thing out there? No. Is an API master test kit more accurate? Mm, watch the video. Not really. Is there more things out there that is more accurate? Yes. I'm not going to buy it. I don't have time for that. But it gets me way close, and that's all that matters. I pull out the chart, and I go, wait a second. Let's compare, and I do that. And I make sure pH, okay, pH is good. I haven't crashed or anything like that. If pH has crashed, I go, ooh, did we run out of buffer cage? I look at that. I look at nitrite. I look at nitrate. I have to get a different kit for ammonia, unfortunately. That's, you know, they, they skew each other's results. But you look at each thing line by line and go, is this good? Is this good? Ah, oh, that's a little bit off, but I uh, wouldn't be causing the problem, but I'll address that later. Okay, is this good? Ooh, that's off, out of whack. Okay, how do we fix that? That's where you need to be starting instead of, you know, oh, I've got my prize fish. It's always been doing well. I don't know why it's not doing well. And I, I want to tell you the story of me. I could tell you about other YouTubers, I could tell you about other breeders and all of that, but 
I think it's good to talk about me because you guys see this in previous videos. So what did I do? What did Corey do to misdiagnose his own stuff because he is lazy like everyone? The first thing I go, you know, these goldfish are a little bit derpy and, mm, you know, maybe it's a food issue. Maybe I'm feeding them too much protein. So I swapped them. I literally bought wheat germ and have only been feeding them wheat germ for like the past six weeks. That didn't do anything, right? Now we know because it was temperature based, but we didn't know it at the time. So, okay, 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 fine, fine, fine. Then I run another round of, of meds, and I've got all kinds of meds down here in the, ca in the, in the sump area. We ran Prozipro, two treatments of that. Didn't do anything. Okay, well, all right, still flashing. Okay, external parasite probably. Let's run ICX. Let's, 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 you know, I don't see any ick or anything like that. Let's run that. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, okay. Test the water. Tested it. I was testing this whole time. Well, pH isn't low because sometimes flashing, if the pH gets too low, their skin's burning, they flash. Nope, that looked fine. Water parameters actually look great. So then I go, okay, well, general cure, right? General cure, maybe internal tapeworms. Maybe there's some gill flukes going on, something. Didn't do anything. Didn't matter. You know, put them through two treatments of that. But now they are still derpy. But they are way less derpy than the previous videos and stuff like that because we've brought the temperature down. They've gotten more active. They're doing better, right? But that wasn't before I have basically lost one to bloat. Goodbye, my now, you guys didn't see this going on because I've been traveling a bunch and I wasn't doing live streams. Otherwise, you would have seen it play out. But uh, one got a bunch of excess fluid. And so I treated with erythromycin. I isolated. I got the temperature way down. I've done everything I could. And I've not been able to reverse it so far. Still alive. Still working on it. But this is a result of of my negligence and what i mean by that it's not i don't consider myself negligent for not knowing that this temperature in this aquarium was this high higher than the other you know 12 15 no now it's i have more tanks now like, higher than the 20 other tanks in the other room that has the heater there's no heater in here right i don't consider that the negligence what i consider the negligence is when i started having problems i didn't look into temperature and that is where I failed my fish. And no one's happy to fail. We try and learn from our mistakes. And the worst part is, I believe if this had happened in the store or the warehouse or something like that, I would have inquired with the staff. I would have said, what are the what are water parameters? What's the temperature? What's this going on? What's that? You know, we monitor water temperatures with the plant tanks and we're monitoring it at the store because the door's opening and closing all of the time. We have to turn heaters on and off depending on time of year. We are, we're adjusting water temperatures and all of these things are going on. And because that's so important, we fixate on it. Well, at home, I'm just the guy that like, I've been keeping a fish a long time. I know what I'm doing. You're doing, ah, it's not temperature. We're not even running heaters in here. It's cold. Like in the, where's my desk? My desk is 68 degrees. We're 73 back there. It's cold in here. You would not think, but we don't think about, well, the lights. The lights transfer some heat down. Well, the canister filter, that adds some heat. Oh, the return pump, that adds heat. All of that led to me not realizing we're running warmer temperatures than the goldfish like. This added some stress. Now, them breeding a bunch, that caused some stress too. And we put meds through them, so you got to give time. Like, okay, we did meds, maybe they'll do better now, and they're not. And what is the secret here? The secret is I didn't test. And there's more tests to do, by the way. I own lots of testing equipment. I own oxygen test kits. I own not only the digital version, I own a liquid version. I own a PAR meter that tests light. How much light in the aquarium is there? I own flow meters to test pumps. I own uh, an uh, uh, airflow meter to test air pumps even. So the more testing equipment you have, the more you can actually get some results you might enjoy, but don't not use them. I know that sounds weird, but we collect all these things and we gain the knowledge. That's the thing, I gain the knowledge. I used to use this thing all the time. What's this thing doing? What's that thing doing? What's that thing doing? What's the temperature of that? Let me make my cat chase this. My dog, will it chase it? Let me, let me put this on someone like I'm a sniper. You do all the things, right? You're going to do all of that. But then you're going to go, well, that information tucked into my brain, and we assume things don't change. And the reality is 
Things do change, and just because we think something's going on doesn't mean it. So seriously, test your water, especially when something goes wrong. If nothing's going wrong and you think everything is perfect, you still need to check in. Is it once a month? Is it every three months? Like, don't go more than six months. Don't Really, don't go more than three months. You'd much rather just go, you know, especially with a strip. A strip takes one minute. One minute of your time, boom, take a look. If you're doing water changes, this would be my first recommendation. If you get strips, something quick. Anytime you change water, test it before and test it after. Then you know, what was it like before I did work? And after I did work, did it get better or worse? That's the thing. A lot of times we make it worse. We don't even realize we're making it worse, you know? Uh, so, you know, if I was doing warm water changes, warm water's coming in, which was one of the problems. I tweaked that a little bit, a little bit, is the water coming in was for all the tanks. Well, the water set to 78 degrees, you know, helps warm that water up a little bit. So I set it to 76 knowing, okay, well, my tank's out there, 74. Let's raise it, all, you know, that'll, that'll probably, you know, maybe they settle out at 73 and a half, 74. But... This tank is retaining that heat. Maybe it's more water volume, whatever it is, right? I tweak that a little bit, and that's the thing. Continual uh, monitoring leads to a very successful aquarium. Testing, testing, testing. That is the true secret to longevity in fish and in a career of anything, really, but especially in fish keeping. So the one secret is test your water. Make sure you have current test kits. Don't let them go out of date. Get more tools, learn more, and don't assume. Don't assume. I'm guilty of it. Almost everyone's guilty of it. We run into it all the time. People that work for me, customers that come in, other YouTubers, we're all guilty of it. In the last couple of years, I've been traveling a lot, haven't been a lot of new fish. Things haven't really gone wrong. I got complacent in, ah, things are fine. They'll be fine. And the reality is we probably have one death you could pin to me going, I mean, it hasn't died yet, but it's going to die. Like it's upside down. It's not doing well. The last thing I can do is aspirate the bladder, which is a very advanced technique that that's what I need to do next. And maybe it'll write itself and maybe the fluid will come out, but it's not looking good. And, uh, you know, so I pinned that on me. It's unfortunate. But the goal when you do lose a fish like this, look ahead, you know, make sure you don't repeat it. That's the important part. So. Good luck. Check out the description below. We've got guides. We've got newsletters, all that kind of stuff where you can get weekly information. And uh, we'll see you around.